donate a tablet? Actually, this is one of the most common questions we get asked every time we do any video related to sculpting in Blender. And the question is always the same, do I need a tablet or can I just sculpt with a mouse? And some also ask if I do have a tablet, should I stay with just a graphics tablet or should I upgrade to a display tablet? Let's find out. Now over the years, I have tried a bunch of different tablets. So what we're going to do is go over all the options and then you can decide for yourself what you think is a best fit for you. So first, let's have a look at all the options that are out there for you when it comes to sculpting and Blender. So what are our options then? Well, on the affordable side, we have our mouse. Then we have pen tablets in the middle, which are a bit more expensive. And on the pricier side, we have display tablets. Now, if you want to kind of jump ahead to any of these methods, here are the timestamps for each of these, so you can skip ahead if you need to. Now, that said, let's have a look at the first option. Now, the mouse is a very popular option because, well, essentially, it's free, as most of us already have a mouse. But is it really good at sculpting? Let's have a look. Now, you might assume that I'm going to hate on the mouse for sculpting this video, but in fact, the mouse has its place for certain parts of the sculpting process. For example, when I go over my models and start tweaking maybe the silhouette, I tend to use the mouse with a grab brush just to make small, tiny tweaks here and there. And for this, the mouse is more than enough. And I think even for simple blockouts, I think you can get away by using just the mouse. But sadly, beyond this point, you'll start to run into frustration as the mouse lacks one important feature. It has no pressure sensitivity, so it's either fully on or fully off. So this means you don't have any control whatsoever about the intensity of your strokes, leaving kind of rough results. And it doesn't just end there. For example, with creases, it's very hard to get clear lines with just a mouse. The experience is very similar like trying to draw using a mouse in Windows Paint. It's just very hard to get nice, smooth strokes. Now, this can kind of be remedied by using the stabilized stroke feature, and this will give you smoother strokes. But since the stroke will be trailing behind your mouse, you'll often have to fight this system quite a lot to get the exact stroke you want. But again, the biggest downside is just that we don't have any pressure control whatsoever, making it very hard to control how much we want to blend certain strokes into others. Now, does that mean it's impossible? I'm sure there are plenty of mouse ninjas in the comments that say they can sculpt perfectly fine with the mouse. However, keep in mind that sculpting with the mouse will probably force you to make some weird gestures which will affect your wrist at some point. Legends say there are also people out there who sculpt with a trackpad, but I believe this to be a myth. I should have to be a sculpting god to make this work for you. Right, so the mouse is free and you can kind of sculpt with it, but it's not the best. Let's have a look at the next option. Right, so next up we have the pen tablet. And this is one of the most common used tools for sculpting in the 3D industry. We can't get more simpler than this. We have a pen, we have a tablet, we draw onto the tablet, and then this gets projected onto the screen. Now, one of the things I see a lot of people say is that these tablets can be really expensive. And although true, it's not always the case. For example, some of the budget brands have some really good deals for their starter tablets. You can also go hunting for deals on sites like eBay to find a good secondhand tablet for a good price. For example, my first tablet was the Wacom Intuos, which I got for really cheap off eBay. And this was because nobody was bidding on it, so I got it for about $14. So if you're tight on money, do spend a bit of time on sites like eBay, just hunting for good deals, and you might actually get a tablet for really cheap. Now, before you place your bid, let's first have a look at what it's like to have a tablet. Right, so I got a tablet, but how does it work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We got a simple USB connector, which connects to the tablet, and then from the tablet to the computer. Then from here, we go to the website of the manufacturer, we look up the tablet that we have, and then we download the drivers. Now, once we got our drivers installed, we can now have a look at how we're gonna set up our tablet. Now, the options you have here highly depend on the kind of tablet that you have, because certain ones have more features than others. For example, mine over here has some hotkey buttons, so I can program all of these and give them certain shortcuts to speed up my workflow. Now, regardless of what tablet you have, one setting you'll definitely have is the ability to set exactly which screen you're going to be projecting to. You can even set it to be projected to all of the screens at the same time. There's a bit of a wacky option, but it's an option nonetheless. Now, cool thing is we can project to any type of screen. So it doesn't matter what kind of screen you have, you can project to it. For example, I have an ultra wide here, which has a different ratio than the tablet, but I can still use my tablet with this ultra wide screen. Now the tablet wouldn't work without a pen and these can also differ between tablets. For example, this one here doesn't have a battery, so it doesn't need to get charged at the back, which is definitely a superior option as I've had issues with batteries in the past. Some even come with these cute little holders, which have some extra nips on the inside. Although to be fair, I've had this pen for a while and these nibs hold up really well and I've yet had to replace a single one. Now, once again, we can customize everything about the pen, like for example, these side buttons, 
as well as, for example, the pressure sensitivity, where we can adjust how these strokes are registered. For example, with a softer profile, we don't need to push down too hard to get a wider stroke, while with the harder profile, it's the opposite. We need to push down quite a lot to get a wider stroke. Now, getting used to how to use this pressure with a pen by pushing down is actually something that's quite natural and is very easy to pick up. Now, one last thing I think I should mention is that your tablet will probably have four points on the surface to tell you the boundaries of the trackable area. So you want to do your strokes within these boundaries. So with this, we've set up our tablet. So let's have a look at how we can use this inside of Blender. Now, to make it a bit easier for you to see, what I'm going to do is project it to this screen instead, which has the same ratio as the YouTube video, just so I don't have to cut out any of the ultra-wide screen. Right, so over here, I'm inside Blender, and as you can see, if I move the pen around the tablet, you can see the brush and the cursor start to follow exactly the same movements. Now, I've mapped one of the buttons to be the middle mouse button, so when I press this, I can also orbit just with the pen, which makes it really easy to quickly adjust my view with just the tablet. Now, I also have mapped one of the buttons to be the shift key, so if I hold that and I hold the button that is the middle mouse, I can now also just pan around, again, just with the tablet. Now, the other button on the pen I've set to the right click, so if I press this, I can quickly adjust my settings for the brush. Now, it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, you can get really fast with just using the tablet in Blender. I think it's very similar to learning how to use a mouse. At first, it kind of feels awkward, but after a bit, it becomes just second nature. Right, right, but the real question here is, what is this sculpting like with a tablet? Let's have a look here. If you remember, we had some difficulty sculpting with the mouse in this area over here. Let's try it now with the tablet. So once again, with the crease brush here, let's draw this line between the body and the legs. So let's draw this together. Now you might notice we once again have this overlapping area where we push in a bit too far. Now we can just redo the stroke, but this time control our pressure. If we do this, we can make these strokes kind of blend in together and make it look like one single long stroke. And there you go. We now got this nice clean crease between the leg and the body. Now, beside the pressure, we also have better control over our strokes. We can more easily create nice flowy creases just with a single stroke. And this is all due to the posture you have while you're holding the pin. It's very easy to make nice, smooth and organic strokes just with the flick of the hand. This will make sculpting organic things like characters and creatures a lot easier. However, there's still some limitations with the pen tablet. You're still drawing on a pad while looking at a screen. And this kind of disconnect still leads to some issues. For example, over here, if I try to create a crease around the eye here, I'll start to kind of drift off a bit and I kind of have to fight it to keep it within the same distance from the eye. Now, all of this is just due to the disconnect of drawing on the tablet while looking at the screen. Now, you can kind of combat this by just drawing a bit slower. So let's redo this. Let's try again. Let's just draw this time a lot slower. And now I have a bit more time to adjust my stroke to make sure I get a nice clean crease around the eye. Now, another thing I should mention is that depending on the size of your tablet, your tablet might be smaller than your screen. So this means that when you do your strokes, they'll kind of get exaggerated on the screen as your motions might be small on the tablet, but they'll be bigger on the screen. So you might notice that some of your strokes are very wobbly, especially if you're sculpting from a distance. Now you notice this especially on kind of edges or harsh lines, they'll be quite wobbly. But to fix this, it's just to zoom in a bit more and just do larger strokes. And by this, you can kind of minimize the amount of wobbliness you're transferring from your shaky hand to the sculpt. Now, before we move on, I should mention that the lightweight and small size of this tablet makes it easy to transport. So if you work remotely or you work in cafes, this is definitely a plus as it's easy to transport and set back up in different locations if you're working, for example, from a laptop. Now, what if you already have a graphics tablet, but you're thinking of upgrading? Is it really worth it? Let's find out. So let's have a look at the split tablets. Now you might have seen some of these being used by professionals when looking at behind the scenes from some of your favorite movies. Now this might lead you to think that since professionals use these display tablets, to be a professional, you need a display tablet. Or do I? Well actually, there are plenty of professional artists that still use graphic tablets. So let's have a look at the differences and if it's really worth it getting a bigger one. Now over the years, I've used many of these different display tablets and before you freak out about how much you have to spend, don't worry, you don't have to spend this ridiculous amount of money to get the display tablet. For example, this tablet I bought a few years ago is not that pricey in comparison and sometimes with deals, you can get them even cheaper. Now, the display tablets are not that different from graphics tablets. Again, you get a pen and often you get a holder with some extra nibs for the pen. You also connect again through USB and sometimes you'll need to use this three split cable to connect both to power 
HDMI and USB, or you can use a USB-C connector if your computer or laptop supports DisplayPort over USB. Now, when it comes to the driver side of things, everything here is pretty much the same as what we had with our graphics tablet, as it's basically a graphics tablet with a screen strapped to it. Now, where things really start to differ is actually using the tablet for sculpting. Now, this of course feels super natural as we're drawing what we're seeing. So there's no disconnect between our hand movement and what we're seeing on the screen. So this really makes you feel in control over every single stroke you make. Now, of course, these tablets are not perfect. There's still some downside to display tablets. For example, you might notice there's a slight delay with the tracking from where the cursor sits and where my pen sits. Now, from my experience, this delay is not really impacting my sculpting ability, but what does get in the way is my own big hand. I can now not see part of the screen because my hand is now covering it. So if you're used to using a graphics tablet, you'll find this kind of gets frustrating at times as you can't really see all of the sculpt at once since your hand is in the way. Now, another thing to consider is that these tablets tend to be a lot bigger than these graphics tablets. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. We now have a lot more real estate to get tracking for our brush, but it does take a lot more space up from our desk. And probably due to the size and weight, you probably have to invest even more money into getting an arm to make using this tablet a bit easier. Now, another thing to consider is the quality of the display, as the price of the display tablet will also impact the quality of the display. So if you go for a cheaper tablet, you might get a display with not such great colors. Now, the same goes for the resolution. If you get a cheaper tablet, you might get lower resolution. For example, here is just 1080p at 22 inches, so you will notice some of these pixels. Another thing to keep in mind is that this device is obviously more complicated than a graphics tablet, so there are more points of failure. For example, with this display tablet, the USB connection failed, so I had to drill a hole into the back of the display and connect up a new USB connector to make it work again. So as you can see, going for one of these budget display tablets might have a few downsides. But luckily, this is slowly changing, as the differences in quality between a Wacom display tablet and a budget display tablet is slowly becoming less noticeable, as the budget brands are improving year on year. So let's check out one of these newer display tablets to see how much they have improved. Now, as I said before, the big brands like Wacom pride themselves on having really good quality displays. They also brag about having touch capability with their screens and that their pens are super precise and sensitive. Same goes for their color accuracy. They pride themselves on the quality of the screen. So how does this compare to a budget tablet? Now, Aggies Pen sent over their latest tablet for us to test. So let's have a look at what's included when you get one of these newer tablets. Now, one thing that's really nice with this one is that it comes with a color certification with the collaboration from the factory. So you can be sure that what you see on the screen are accurate colors. And I gotta say, the quality of the OLED display is really impressive and the colors are nice and deep. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to the other accessories. Now, a tablet wouldn't work without any pens, and Eki's pen gave us two, both a thin and wider pen, who we'll also come with some spare nibs. Now, if you're worried about running out of nibs, Eki's pen threw in a bunch more just in case we need any more. Now, the display doesn't have any hotkeys, but we do get this hotkey remote that's wireless, which we can use instead to program our hotkeys. We even have a bunch of stickers that we can use to kind of help us remind what each of these buttons do once we've programmed them. Now, the tablet works just like all the other tablets by connecting it up with a USB-C connection. So you connect it up in the back here and then you connect this to your computer. Now, if your computer supports DisplayPort over USB-C, then you can use just this simple connection. But if not, you can use this splitter box here, which gets its power through USB-C and splits off into HDMI and a USB connection. Now, for the power, you can use this USB-C adapter, which you can then plug into the wall. This adapter also comes with hot swappable connections, which is really handy if you travel between different areas, like me between the UK and Europe. Now, the tablet actually is really lightweight for its size, which I think is pretty cool, and it comes with these little tiny feet that you can use to kind of put the tablet at an angle. Although, in my opinion, the angle that we get is very shallow, and that's something I'm personally very comfortable with. So what really disappointed me is that it doesn't have a visa mount support at the back here, so I can't mount it to an arm. But luckily, there's a workaround. Since this tablet is kind of laptop-sized, I can use one of these laptop mounts to kind of slide it in here and use this to mount it instead. And I do think that the lightweight of this tablet and the simple feet can actually be a plus. We can easily use this tablet as a mobile option. So if you work on the go, this is definitely a plus. Especially if you have a laptop that supports DisplayPort over USB-C, as now you only need a single cable to connect to this tablet. Now, this tablet is smaller than my 22-inch tablet, but after using it for a week, I haven't really noticed that much of a difference using this smaller size tablet. And it's a night-a-day difference with the improved quality of the display. 
which is very hard to show on camera, but in person, the deep blacks definitely impact you. And the same goes for the increase in resolution. Since it's 4K, everything is nice and crisp, so you won't notice any pixel when you're really sitting up close to the tablet. Right, so that's just the screen, but what about the actual quality of sculpting with this tablet? Well, the tablet side has also been improved. For example, there is a touchscreen ability, we'll cover this later, and we also have improvements when it comes to the actual pen. As I mentioned before, we have two different pens, and you can even set these up differently depending on what you want to use them for. Now, we can adjust the profiles for each of these pens differently as well, but this is nothing really new. What is new is the amount of pressure that we can apply to the pen. If you compare this to my Canvas 22, you can see this has about 8,000 levels of pressure. Compare this to the Artist Ultra, which has about 16,000 levels, making our strokes even more accurate. Another feature is the eraser on the back of the pen. Now, this is not really useful in Blender, but you can map this to any key you want. So maybe for Grease Pencil, this can be useful. Now, I did mention earlier that there are touch controls, and this can be toggled with this button over here on the top. Now, this allows me to use my finger as basically the mouse, so I can select things within Blender with my finger, which is pretty cool, but this is pretty much where the fun ends, as there's no native touch controls within the viewport to kind of move it around. Where it does work really well is in applications like Photoshop, where you can use gestures to easily move around the image, which makes it very easy to use. However, this does mean that you'll be touching your screen all the time, so do have a cloth at hand so you can easily clean your screen. So as you can see, the difference in quality between these budget displays and these professional displays is getting smaller and smaller. But we do get back to our original question. Which tablet do I need to get to sculpt in Blender, if any? Now the answer to this really depends on the person. For example, even within the CG Boost team, everyone has different preferences. For example, Louis uses both a graphics tablet and a display tablet, and he kind of jumps between the two depending on what he's doing. Although for everyday tasks, he does prefer just using a standard graphics tablet. On the other hand, we have Martin, who really enjoys using a display tablet, especially with Grease Pencil, which he's been using a lot lately with his project Heroes of Bronze. On the other hand, we have Zach, who's used all the options and still prefers to use just a giant graphics tablet. So the answer to what tablet you should pick really depends on what you need. There are even artists out there who still use just a mouse and get really good sculpts out just using this. So I recommend you look at the pros and cons of each of the options and then decide for yourself what you think would fit best for you. Now, if you made it to this point in the video, I'm sure you're really interested in sculpting. Now, if you're new to it, we have a free YouTube video, which basically goes through the entire process of sculpting for free. So check it out. And if you want to learn even more, we also have a paid course where you can go really into depth into the sculpting process, which will teach you basically everything that has to do with sculpting in Blender. Now, these courses don't just teach you how to sculpt and be better in Blender. They also help us fund these really cool projects like the free sculpting course so we can give things back for free to the community. So I hope this video was useful. I hope you learned maybe a few new things about how tablets work and if they're really useful for sculpting. Let me know your thoughts. Also, if you're thinking of getting a tablet and you have a few doubts, don't worry, leave some comments. We, we can help you with those. And if you already have a tablet, feel free to let us know what you think about it. How is your experience with either a graphics tablet or a display tablet? Or even if you're just using a mouse, how are you finding it? Let us know. Anyway, this is it for this video. So see you in the next one.